All right, hello everybody. I've just opened up this file and we're going to take a look at it together to see if we can make it a little better for uh, maybe using in a live uh, situation if you want to perform this song and you want to sing along to this song. And uh, you've just downloaded it for the first time and you're just going through it. Let's just take a quick listen to it. It's a very popular old rock and roll song. Okay, it sounds like a great file. There are things that you should check and things you, you should set up if you're going to use this in a live situation and you want to be ready to perform it. You just want to get familiar with it. The first thing I do is go up to view and look at system exclusive. And there are five GS reset messages there, okay? The unit that I have, the JV1010, is a general MIDI. It's not a GS, although Roland makes the GS system as well. But that's another story. So we're going to set this up for general MIDI. We're going to come up to our little folder here. And usually it'll open up to Cakewalk Pro Audio and it'll show you all your system exclusive messages. The one you're looking for is General MIDI. You open that. Okay. Well, I put it in the wrong spot. Let's get rid of it. Sorry about that. We're going to move it right to the top. I'm going to open that up again. General MIDI system. We're going to click this little up arrow, which means that it's automatically going to be sent when the file opens. So now we know that it's going to send the general MIDI message. All right, this has got a pretty fast intro. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to set this up to my general MIDI bank. And it's got the number 8 here. But I want to set it to number 1, general MIDI drum set. If this is set... To none. Watch what happens here when I go into the events list. I'm sorry, the piano roll. Go into the piano roll. It shows the drums, but it shows a piano on the left-hand side. Whenever you, after you get everything set up on your sound module, you'll, you'll want to set these banks and ports and patches. And I'll tell you why. Because it makes it so much easier to edit your instruments. So now what we have here is a list of all the drum sounds. I'm not a big fan of this verb kick, so what I like to do is highlight it, come up to edit, hit transpose, and hit the one, and it takes it up to this hybrid kick. It's got a little more power to it. Now, with this little drum roll, it doesn't give you much time to get ready to start the song. So what we can do here is make sure you're on the pencil. I like to click the eighth note. Right-click this little box and make sure the quarter note is chosen and move to. And then it allows you to put in a click to get ready for the song to start. And I'm looking for the hi-hat. In this particular instance, I'd, I'd give it one and three, and then one, two, three. And I'll show you what happens here. One, two. One, two, three, four. So that gives you a nice little warning to know when the song is coming in. Now, as I look up here at the tempo, it's starting at 120. I'm going to change that to 170 to get it closer to where the other one is. Watch. 173. Okay, that's that's an odd time, uh, an odd tempo. So I'm going to go 173 for now. We're not going to get too much into the tempos just yet. So now we know when the song is starting. Okay, 
when you're going to start to sing. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Okay? We're going to put a marker right there, F11. F11. And that's verse 1. Just helps us to negotiate, to maneuver around the song. I'm going to unhighlight this. We've got some em empty tracks here. I like to go to the name track, hit the delete key, and just tighten everything up. Let's take a look at this track right here. Set to general MIDI. Vibraphone, so that's the vocal, that's the vox. I like to mark that. We can drop that way down. So this has got a nice acoustic bass from the 50s, which sounds really great for this song. Let's just take a look at the the events view for a minute. They've got this set on 20, which is okay. I don't like to put too much reverb on a bass. I'm going to drop that down to 12. Chorus, I'm going to drop that down to 12. And we're going to kind of leave everything right there. Those first few bass notes are pretty strong. So we got the vocal, we have the bass, and the drums to kick off the song. There's a muted guitar right there. It's not very loud. Let's take a look at the advanced list on this. Got it set to uh, 60 on the reverb, which is pretty darn high in my estimation. Drop it down to 32. And I'm looking at all of these notes here. We could make those a little stronger in a, in a, in a few different ways. I'm just going to turn up the volume on this to 100, maybe 105. I'm going to come over here. to see that a little bit louder. Control F10, Control F9, highlight everything, come in to edit, scale velocity, this little window can help us raise the velocity or the volume of these notes. It's, it's, a, it's a way to increase volume. So when I go 110, 110, that's going to add 10% to these notes. So they jumped up 10% in volume. We have the saxophone here on the offbeats. And we'll put this one in here, which is guitar fret noise. I'm not a big fan of that one. We'll leave it in there, but we can turn it down. This is a very basic file. It only has uh, six tracks. I just kind of like to put markers along the way. So if you're a guitar player, you can play along with this and add your own little parts. So there's a lead guitar right there. That's a solo. We can put in the solo.
So you may want to change that muted guitar to a jazz guitar. All of these different instruments are to taste. So it all depends on what you like to hear and how you hear the song. And that's the beauty of the MIDI files. You can introduce a lot of different sounds, different instruments for standard songs and make them your own. You can do up your own version of the song. So you can use this song to uh, perform this song live and through a large PA system it'll sound tremendous. I want to look at one more thing here. So this song should be in the key of A. The first bass note is A. So that tells me, in this particular instance, that it's in the key of A. I'll show you a little trick here. When you come up to this 4-4 four, four equal sign, it's in the key of C, so it hasn't been programmed properly. So if we put it in the key of A, this will show the notes correctly. Okay, C sharp and so on. And remember to make changes to your, as you make changes to your song, to save them, okay? So what we did was we, uh, we made sure that the system exclusive message was here, okay? View your sysx, and we put in the general MIDI message for your sound module, so everything will sound correctly. We put in some markers. We balanced out the track. The only way you're going to know for sure if this is going to sound good is to actually play it through your system. You have to put it through a real PA system with your speakers. Uh, that guitar sounds much better than the uh, muted guitar. So there are some tips for mixing a MIDI file. If you download these MIDI files from the internet, you want to make them your own. So you want to dig in deep and you want to edit them and make them to suit your voice and to suit your style. All right, that's all for now. Europa Man over and out.